Hello again guys and welcome back to Civ 5. Thanks again for joining me. I'm going to click the next turn button right away and get things rolling. We're still expanding. I'm toying with the idea of establishing a fifth city down here in the marshes to give me access to the Sugar and Mount Kalish which is just there. We have completed the Great Wall which gives us a bit of extra defense. We've still got this barbarian camp down here that I'm trying to sort out which I'm desperately trying to keep these Pictish warriors alive. Let's go and have a look at the Great Wall. There it is. It's all the way around the borders of Edinburgh, although the borders have expanded slightly since the wall was built. But that does mean that enemy units have to, which includes barbarians, have to use an extra movement per tile when they're inside our walls. Which isn't going to slow them down that much anyway, because it was full of forests to begin with. Um, and that gets negated once dynamite is discovered anyway, but for the time being we're doing quite well. So we're going to change the production and, well, start a new production. Now, nothing's really going to give us any science at the moment. We now actually need two libraries. Before we only needed one, we now need two. We need one in Cardiff and we need one in Truro. And I don't have enough gold to purchase them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the market because that will give me an extra 25% to my gold plus an extra one gold per turn. It also increases the amount of gold that's generated from uh, trade routes to other players with a market in their city as well. So having markets in every city is a great way to really imp increase the gold per turn that you've got coming in. So as you can see at the moment, I've got 41 gold per turn on the income and I've got 25 gold per turn actually going out, which, you know, isn't great. So... Let's have a look down there. 27 output from all cities. 8 from city connections. Uh, 3 from trade routes between your cities and other civilizations. That's right, because I'm only getting 1 gold per turn from uh, Alexandra and 1 gold per turn from uh, Ramses, I believe. Right, these guys have nearly got all the way down here, so let's keep them moving. I might take them around the other side of the mountain, actually. Or we'll, well, we'll see what happens. See what happens when we get there. I'm heading my great profits back to Edinburgh because I was originally going to use them to spread religion and I've decided I want to use them to enhance my religion if I can. So let the barbarians have their turn. Nothing really going on. Let's just ignore that for now. We can have another social policy. Uh, where are my great profits? So yeah, we could still have them build a holy site, but let's get them next to the city. can't remember whether they need to be next to it or standing in it. Uh, let's have a look at our social policies. Now, we've got a few that we could have. Liberty is very good for expanding your civilization as a whole. Um, improved construction rate uh, and a worker appears near the capital. Now, that would be really, really good. Having a free worker and, and construction improvement construction rate. An improvement is anything that can be built on a tile, not counting a road or a fort so farms pastures um camps any uh trading posts anything that can be built on a tile to improve it increased by 25 percent, which is brilliant uh we could also get an extra one percent production in every city and five percent production uh when building buildings and you know extra happiness for trade routes liberty is really good once you're starting to expand from one city Honour is more used for sort of military tactics. It gives you better production when building units, better combat strength. PT gives us more sort of faith. So this is ideal if we want to work down the religious route. Uh, patronage is more for culture. Exploration gives us a lot of advantage for seafaring, but also allows us to get some additional uh, gold through trading. Commerce obviously is very heavily towards trade, and aesthetics is quite heavily towards culture. Rationalism, we need to get into the Renaissance era, but that is more towards science. This is where we're going to be dumping a lot of points later on into rationalism. For the moment, though, we're going to be going for liberty because we're trying to expand quite rapidly. Cardiff is going to build a water mill. Now it has the advantage of building a water mill because it is on a river and that water mill will give us an extra two food and one production per turn. Let's go on to the next turn and see what's going to happen. Cardiff's also about to increase in size which is fantastic. Another barbarian encampment discovered. As if that should surprise me. Now they're over here. 
Right, can these guys do anything? They can spread religion. Let's move them into the city. We can now enhance religion. So we're going to enhance our religion. And we can now add more beliefs to our religion. So we've already got our original pantheon, which is 10% faster growth rate. We've got her, our um, founder, uh, founder belief, which gives us uh, extra science whenever a missionary or prophet spreads his religion. And we've got our follower relief, which is 15% faster growth rate if a city is not at war. So we're going to have a second follower belief. And anything that gives us food or science would be ideal. So I think we are going... Mm, specialists feed the world shrines and temples provide next to one food in each city why not we, we are a civilization based on religion that's what our sort of uh, civilization benefit is so let's play on that and then we can have an enhancer belief as well we can't we don't get a bonus belief because we're not playing as the, uh, the byzantines so we'll have a enhancer belief now a lot of these are very military based uh, let's have a look what we could have that would be useful. 50 faith each time a great person is expended. I'm going to go for that and I'll tell you the reason why. Like I said, one of the great things with playing as the Celts is we get a lot of bonus faith. And we can use bonus faith, or any faith, we can use faith points to purchase great people, such as great engineers and great scientists. And they will give us a really good boost to our production rate and our science rate. And this gives us 50 faith each time a great person is expended. So what that is essentially allowing me to do is using faith to buy a great person, and then when I use the great person, I get some of the faith back. So well, that's definitely the way to go there. Right, that barbarian camp is all the way over here. I don't really see how that's my problem. It looks They could be on an island. That looks like a two-hex island. Difficult to tell, but we've got to go and wipe those guys out as quick as we can. So, maybe these guys move over here, just to leave us a path. They can still see, and they can come for backup if need be later on. So, I can still see that Alexander appears only to have three cities, all clumped quite close together there. I can only see two cities for Egypt. I can actually see five cities for Germany, and one of them is actually quite uh, quite well out of the way. Frankfurt's really far down there, and I'm not too sure why. No wonder he's broke, though, with that many cities. It doesn't look like he can support himself all that well. But we're going to continue down here with our Pictish Warriors. Now, we have bumped into a ranged unit, which is a bit of a pain. But I think we can get to them and take them out without too much of an issue. Hopefully get rid of that barbarian camp down here. And then I'll probably take some of these guys up to Mombasa and see if we can help deal with their apparent barbarian problem. Now, this would only be a minor victory, which is a bit of a shame, because they do have the defensive bonus. But we can try hit-and-run tactics. We'll just run in, do a bit of damage, and run out. Uh, Truro's grown. And the city of Cardiff wants crab. I don't actually think we have any crab near our shores. Got fish. Yeah, I think they might have to go on wanting, to be honest. I have seen the AI set up um, cities on little one-tile islands as well. It's always funny when that happens. Because they can't actually expand. I mean, you you obviously you you can still expand your borders, and you can still get things like food and even oil, and some luxury resources from sea tiles. But it's hardly the best place to uh, set up, unless you're just using it like a kind of a a forward naval base. That's about the only time it becomes uh, really relevant. So we might be able to take these guys out. We're actually chipping away at them quite well. On our next attack, it should be a decisive victory. Now the question is, do I build a settler? Do I build another settler and head down here and set up city number five? Or do I make another caravan? I think I'm going to go the settler route. It's probably a little bit daft setting up five cities, but Germany already has five. Um, I'm surprised Greece has so few, actually. I was expecting more from Greece. They usually expand a little bit faster. Even Athens only has a size of 9. 
Edinburgh's got a size of 13. Hamburg. Berlin has a size of 7. Frankfurt's only got a size of 2. Thebes has got a size of 7. So, in the grand scheme of things, I've actually built this city up quite quickly. It's a lot bigger than the other cities are. They're now starting to build a road and connect Cardiff to Edinburgh. And at some point, they'll probably do the same for Truro once they've up, uh, improved some of these tiles. So, let's go on to the next turn. See if anything exciting is about to happen. So, we're now into turn 136. Barbarians having a turn. Deciding not to do anything. Very annoyingly. Spawning some archers. But this will be a decisive victory. Which means it should be um, the camp taken. Okay. At least they're not going to spawn anymore. We got some XP for that. We got some faith for that. If I attack them directly. They're going to be taken out. So we'll see what they do. Are they going to take a pot shot. Or are they going to run away. Their best thing to do would be to stand and fight. Because I'm going to take damage and they're not. Which means I may not have enough damage output on this turn. The merchants and the traders. And there's guilds completed. So it would still be a decisive victory. Uh, a unit has been promoted, which is them anyway. I'm going to give them shock, which is combat strength when fighting in open terrain, which is what this is. They're going to win anyway. At least it's telling me they are. And this is the bit where I think to myself, well, I wish I'd have just taken the insta-heal. But if you use the insta-heal, you, you pass up the opportunity for promotion. So there you go. I have a promoted unit. Admittedly, it's taken some damage, but I can now heal up with them. So let's have a look at our tech tree. We could go for machinery. And that would allow us to have crossbowmen. And faster movement on roads, which is definitely worth having. Theology would allow us to have the... What is it I'm looking for? We can have the Grand Table. Table? What am I about? We have the Grand Temple. Which doubles religious pressure emanating from the city. That would be brilliant in the capital. Spread our religion a bit further, a bit faster. Civil Service would give us pikemen. Yeah, I think we're going to go for the Civil Service. Then we'll probably go Theology on the next turn. I do find that if you're trying to get a scientific victory, one of the best things to do is try and spread your... Relig your um, Science points evenly across the table. Don't just try and rush down one side. It doesn't seem to work. Getting quite a lot of unhappiness generated by population now. This is the point where I have to start thinking about building coliseums and things to generate additional happiness. So that's not too much of a problem. We now have our... Um, I think that's still one of the caravans we already had. So... Yeah, previous route was to Florence, as it tells me there. So we'll carry on with that route to Florence, because that was working out fine for us. And we will eventually build another and probably send that one off to Mombasa. We do need to send some units over there, because they apparently did have a bit of a barbarian problem. I can't see a barbarian camp near them. Well, that doesn't mean a thing. So we've met Ur. We're not the first people to meet them because they've only given us 15 gold. They're a maritime city-state, which means they could potentially give us food. Personality is hostile, um, which basically means that influence drops more quickly with them. And they have gold. So not too bothered about them at the moment. Dublin has finished its production. So what we are going to do is we can't build a circus, but we can build a coliseum, which will give us a bit of happiness. So, let's go for the Colosseum. Because, obviously, happiness affects the entire civilization. My happiness is now at zero. Which is not great. You're going to stay there until you're healed. You guys are going to... I can see a barbarian camp there, can't I? But that's the one that is potentially... On an island... I think we'll go and have a look, because these guys seem a little bit too far away to actually get up and help Mombasa. I'm just wondering if it's worth me actually spending money on a unit. But what it's probably better to do is I'm going to purchase the library in at least one city while I've got the money. It'll save me it'll save it burning a hole in my pocket and me spending it on something else because what I really want to be able to to do is 
create um what is it I want to create? I wish the camera would stop moving around. It's one of the very annoying things about Civ. What I want to be... Oh, can't do it from that one. I want to be able to make the National College, which will give me a big, big science boost. And the longer I leave it, the more chance there is that somebody else is going to sort of steal that. Now, one thing you will notice now, now I've researched economy, I have the option to convert 25% of the production of the city into gold. So that's really useful. If you get to a point where a city has built everything it needs to build and you don't, you no longer need to build anything, you instead of wasting all that construction every turn, you can convert it into gold. Later on, with one of the other... Um, one of the other research trees, we can convert it into, I think it's this one, education. Yeah, so once we research education, we'll be able to convert production into research as well. So let's get on to the next turn. Edinburgh is not growing, but that's because it's uh, producing a settler. It's probably good that it's not growing because population is damaging our happiness at the moment. But we are going to start building some of these happiness buildings. We're using these guys to explore a bit. We might actually be able to take that bandit camp, actually. Don't know why I keep calling them bandits, because they're barbarians. I mean, I suppose technically they're bandits, but still. Okay, can't do anything else at the moment. We can't build the East India Trading Company because we need more markets. We can't build the National College because we are still short our library in Truro. So what we're going to do is build a Colosseum and just get the happiness a bit more. We've got settlers now. What I'm going to do is keep them within my borders because if I build this city now, then I'm going to need another library before I can build the college. So I'm not going to found the city just yet. Let's keep them in the safety of my own borders. Go on to the next turn. This is the problem about having multiple cities um, is that when you need... Oh, thought we'd met someone else there. It stalled for a moment. If you need to have buildings in your cities in order to be able to build national wonders, you get really screwed over by having a lot of cities. So let's try and avoid that. Now, these guys aren't producing a lot of anything because, you know, they're not a big city. So we could go for a shrine because a shrine is one of the quickest things we can build. And because of liberty, it now gives us an extra, um, extra food for having the shrine as well. So we're definitely going to go for that. These guys, I'm just going to edge forward. I've found ancient ruins as well. That's nice. Get that on the next turn. It might even give them an upgrade. I doubt it, but we'll see. Hopefully I should have the advantage against pikemen. Because I would be on a hill. But we'll see what happens. Now that's interesting. Because... Oh, it's barbarians. I looked at the colours of the flag and I thought that was Germany for a moment, but no, it is actually barbarians, so that's not a problem. That's Germany. Not sure what he's doing up there. Well, let's get the ancient ruins. Oh, right, brilliant. Gives us more population. Now we've gone into unhappiness level of one. Uh, this will give us a minor victory. Can't take it on this turn. Those guys are going to stay there until we have... Right, where's the other library that we need? I think it's in Truro. Yeah, and it's 400 gold, so we can't build the library yet. We need to get up to 400 gold. Might take a while. Let's have a look at the old diplomacy menu. Have I got anything that I can trade with anybody? Uh, let's go back to Ramses. He seems to have deep pockets. What have I got? I could offer him furs. What would you give me for this? More horses. And one gold per turn for 30 turns. No, it's not really worth it. Shame. I was just wondering if I could get somebody to give me a lump sum of money. But, um, no. We might just have to weather this one out. I have got Colosseums being built in Dublin and Edinburgh. And as soon as they're completed, that will help with the happiness. But it is going to slow things down for a turn or two while we're waiting for that. So Ty's Bowmen have managed to get rid of that um, Trireme or Gallius, whatever it was. Cardiff can now produce, and I think we're going to go for... Now, do we go for a shrine? 
And obviously the reason that isn't providing food is because Cardiff hasn't adopted a religion yet. When it adopts the religion, the shrine will provide food as well. Or do I go for the market? It is connected by a road. The market would make sense, but the shrine's only five turns and hopefully it'll get food soon and that'll decrease the time it takes to build a market. Obviously, all of it's not quite connected by a road, actually. They're still working on the final tile. So, we have bridges going across roads. And if you travel... If you cross a river, normally, you use up all of your movement points. It doesn't matter. How, a unit could have 100 movement points. But if you cross a river, you, you use all of them. If you cross a river using a road, you still lose all of them unless you've researched engineering. Once you've researched engineering, you don't get a penalty for crossing the rivers on the roads anymore. So that's what we want to be doing. All right, we're going to try and attack these guys again. It's going to be another minor victory. We're going to keep chipping away at them. And then I might go to a... I might have to keep switching between fortify and attack. Just to see how it uh, how it turns out. Of course, these are the guys that have already hit their XP cap. So killing them isn't really going to help. But it will give me a bit of extra gold. And it will be another barbarian camp off the map as well. Only thing that saves us. So we now have civil service. And we have a great engineer. That could be really useful. Um, now, one of the annoying things here is actually these barbarians i think are the people hassling tires so taking them out isn't a bad thing so let's tell them to fortify we could actually upgrade them now to pikemen so they must be the replacement for spearmen and now they can upgrade to pikemen but they'd have to be in my own territory so not worry too much about that now back to the tech tree we said we were going to do theology because that'll help us with compass and education so we might as well get that done unit needs orders okay so what can you do with a great engineer? Well, you can move him to a tile, and I'll actually show you on the next turn because it's uh, he's used his movement to use. It is used his movement to move. So I'll show you what he can do on his next turn. So they want us to renew our declaration of friendship. Yeah, why not? Because you know trade agreements. Lovely, you've been given us money. Ramses has completed the oracle. Not too bothered about that. So there are basically two things that you can do with a great engineer. The first is to construct a manufactory. Now, the manufactory will remove whatever the current output of the land is. So if you look at a forest, a forest uh, and plains produce... Uh, or well, it'll be a plain. The plain produces one food. It would remove the plain, so we wouldn't get the food, but it would give us five production. So the idea is... If you use a great engineer to upgrade a tile, you get a building or an upgrade that gives you additional production. Similarly, if you have a great scientist, you can use the great scientist to build a... I um, can't remember what the place is called now. can't remember the name of the place. Um, but yeah, you can use the um, science, great scientist to uh, make a building and that will give you additional science per turn. But what I want to do is choose my production and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build Chichen Itza because Chichen Itza will give us four happiness and one culture and it increases the length of golden ages by 50% now that's 13 turns that's like the longest thing that I can build turn wise so we're going to do that return to map now what I'm going to do is move my great engineer back into the city and you can now see he has something called hurry production. This order will hurry the production on the city's current effort. It consumes the great person and it gives 300 to production. Well, Chichen Itza is going to take, um, what does it tell me how much? Cost 300 production. So if I expend my great person with hurry production, Chichen Itza now goes down to one turn. So great engineers are absolutely brilliant and because i used the great engineer i got the 50 uh faith back so that was well worth having choose production at dublin what can we go for can we get any let's go for a market let's get these markets up and running we might be able to get the east india trading company done that would help us out quite a lot Still want to found that fourth city, but I don't want to rush it too early. 
So there's Chichen Itza built. And we've got another city connected via a road. So we've now got 26 gold per turn coming in. Our happiness is back up to six. We still need another caravan. So let's get one of those out while we can, because it's only two turns away. Um, City of Truro wants ivory. I'm not sure that we've got any ivory nearby either. Oh well, let's have a little look what's going on down here with these barbarians, because they've got these... Now these guys can't get to us at the moment, which isn't a bad thing. So let's go in and have another hack at these guys. At the very least, I'd like to get the get the camp gone. And then we can get rid of these uh, these horsemen. Haven't built any mounted units of my own yet. But I'm not really playing for a militaristic win, so I don't produce units often enough and they usually end up getting left behind. I can keep them alive for quite a decent length of time. And obviously we're only fighting barbarians at the moment, and barbarians aren't too difficult to eradicate. So this will be a decisive victory. This will take the camp. Now, at this point, these guys might attack me and I might lose every possibility of that happening. But at least the camp's gone. And that's given me an extra 25 gold. And now I'm only four turns away, three turns away from being able to build that last library. And then we can uh, build the uh, National College. I'm going to move these guys around just so they can back them up and kill those guys later on if they need to. So we'll be ending the turn there. Oh, in Germany and our allies. Now, they are attacking. It's probably me dead, to be honest. Although, yeah. Mind you, I'm still going to mine a victory, even though I'm half dead. And I think the main reason... Let's let's fortify until healed. Maybe we can fend them off until the other guys get there. The main thing is, I think the, the Pictish warriors replace the normal spearmen because they can be upgraded to pikemen. I think that's the logical upgrade. And pikemen and spearmen are very very good against mounted units because obviously horses running into big pointy sticks big pointy sticks usually win so we've now got production at cardiff and they're suggesting a market i don't disagree with them so let's go for that we now have production at edinburgh now don't have enough money yet to build the national college don't really want to start building something yet that's going to take lots and lots of turns so i might just go for the temple because that will give us some more faith and some more food it will mean that we'll still have a couple of turns in between um buying the last library and that finishing its completion but that's not too bad so we've got our third caravan let's trade with mombasa put a bit more religious pressure on them i mean they follow our religion anyway but trading with them is not a bad idea we could also connect our road networks to city-states, but sometimes they actually ask for that to be done as a as a mission. So it's worth waiting until you get one of those before you do it, and then it's it's an easy bonus. Or or build it partially, but not all the way, and then just build the last uh, the last one to connect them up. Remember, if they want to be connected to us, we don't have to build a road from Mombasa to Edinburgh. It just has to go from Mombasa to the existing road. So I think we're going to carry on sending food out to Cardiff and I want to bolster Cardiff because they are our easternmost city and if we get an attack this is where it's likely to come from. If I do, well I will because I've already bought the settlers, when I get my fifth city down here this will probably be the city that I try and grow and fortify and give all the defensive bonuses and give all the military bonuses because this is going to be the city that is closest to Greece, closest to Germany and will probably be the first line of defence if we do get attacked. So let's move on into the next turn. Again I don't want the video to run on too long so we'll probably just do another turn or two and then I will wrap this video up. I'm quite pleased with the pace at which things are going. Um, oh well. Oh no, still alive. Just. I don't know how, but still alive. Um, major defeat if I attack now, so I'm going to try and run away, which is probably the worst thing to do, but at least these guys are going to head them off. Um, I'm quite pleased with how things are going in the sense of how I'm expanding and I've actually got a few workers now. We're starting to get some tiles upgraded. I actually feel like I've I've 
sort of caught up with myself because I did stall a little bit at the beginning. So what I could do is I could build a trireme and get that off exploring. Although it's probably just going to run into loads and loads of bandits. I could build a library which would take 15 turns but that's uh, pointless because I'm going to buy one anyway. So let's go for a granary which will give us more food. On the next turn we'll have enough money to buy that library. That's the important thing here. So we'll go for the next turn. Are they attacking? Yes, they're attacking. Which is not good for me, but at the same time, it's not good for them either. Because, yeah, that was a pretty... Um, ah. My food surplus is now the highest, considering I had cities starving a few minutes ago. Um, those other guys were the ones that were already upgraded. These were the guys that haven't yet hit their cap on XP. So they probably will get another promotion from taking that unit out. Possibly. Yep, 5 XP and 6 faith. Whether or not that's enough for a promotion, we will see on the next turn. 414 gold. So we're going to go over to Truro. Now, we're not going to interrupt its current production, but we are going to make a purchase. We could also now purchase um, Inquisitors as well as Missionaries. Uh, and Inquisitors are used to remove other religions from cities. Now, a missionary will try and spread religion and... It will convert so much of the population, but an Inquisitor will completely remove a, another religion. Um, not too worried about that at the moment. We are going to buy, with money, a library. And that now means that when Edinburgh has finished with its temple, it can build the National College, providing somebody else doesn't beat me to it. Let's go to the next turn. Now, once I start to build the National College, I can then pop up the the fifth city. You only need to have the, the units. Uh, you only need to have those buildings in all of your existing cities when you start building the wonder. So Dublin is now finished. We could go for Petra, which would give us extra food and production in desert tiles. I'm just thinking: is it better to have that in Dublin, or is it better to have that in Truro? Um, but there again, my economic advisor and foreign advisor are recommending it, so it's not a bad idea. Let's go for that. It might all work out well in the end. And we could have metal casting. I think I'm going to go for education, though, because that would allow me to build a university in any city that has a library. And it gives us um, an extra two science from jungle tiles worked in the city. Uh, also, it gives us the ability to build the Oxford University Wonder, which would again increase our science. So we're going to go for education this time around. So you, you definitely want to prioritise sciences. If you're going for a science victory like I am, definitely prioritise things in the tree that will give you a science boost. Because when it's something like a wonder, you want to be able to be the first person to build that wonder. I also get a free tech for building it as well. So, you know, it's well worth having. A unit needs orders, which is these guys. They've done their thing. I'm going to bring them back to base now. Actually, I'm just going to tell them to come up here and whatever's the quickest route back, uh, they will work it out for themselves. Sometimes it's across water. Yeah, it is there. It co it costs um, sort of all of your movement to embark and all of your movement to disembark, but sometimes it's quicker going across the water. Uh, I think the only person that doesn't apply to is possibly Denmark. I think they actually have a bonus that stops them from uh, it only costs them one movement point to get in and out of the water which is really great for them. They're, they're, they're a great civilization to play if you're on an uh, archipelago map or anything that has a lot of water because they're really really good at getting units across water. So I think that's enough of me rambling on for this video. We're one turn away from completing that temple and then we can start building on the National College. And then hopefully 10 turns later we will have this finished and we'll be able to build Oxford University. And we will then get... Uh, do we need anything else for it? Must have a university in all cities. So that means our four existing cities we're going to have to build a, un a university. Which we can do because they've all got a library. Um, if we 
get this fifth city founded it also means we're going to have to build a library or buy build a library or and university in that city as well so i don't know what i'm going to do with these guys for the time being i've got them produced i might just sit on them and leave them there and wait until i've got the uh, Oxford University up first and then think about making that fifth city it would have been nice to set it up here then we could have got even more dies we could have um, worked Mount Kalash for an extra two happiness and six faith which is you know really an ideal thing to do and also we could then get the sugar but we'll see how that goes but that's all for this video guys so once again thanks for watching and I hope you're still enjoying it and as always if you do have any questions, either drop me a mail or leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer and explain them for you. So until next time, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye for now.